Today we're going to build this easy access workbench top tool organizer. I'm not sure if I like it yet. Let me know down below in the comments. I do a lot more than woodworking in my shop, so I took all the tools that I use most often. Some of these are electrical, some of them are for woodworking, and a lot of them are for measuring and marking. While I figure out what I want my tool center, let's take a look at my inspiration. I saw this instant access tool center with over a hundred tools in it on YouTube, and I'll link that down below. I didn't need something exactly like this, so I decided to make my own. I didn't really go into it with a plan, just a general inspiration and uh, kind of figured it out as I went. I decided I wanted to make the main body out of walnut, so I went ahead and milled some up and was able to start laying out my tools. I measured and marked the space that I needed and I used this super glue trick where you use wood glue and that's the long term hold, but with a few dabs of super glue you get an instant bond so you can move on. This is especially great in shop projects. I took care to use a very minimal amount of glue because I didn't want wood glue or super glue squeezing out and getting on my measuring and marking tools and drying. For some of the tools that I didn't want to fall completely through, I put in little stop pieces out of scraps of walnut. Since these don't really take any weight, I didn't even use wood glue here, just a small amount of super glue. With my back panel together, I used glue to close it all up, and then I could move on to the middle section which holds the bulk of the actual hand tools. I made sure to keep one side completely square, this way I could use it against the fence and run it through the table saw to clean up the bottom, and then I could use my crosscut sled to clean up the sides and make this look like one piece of wood again. I figured out how much wood I'd need for the middle section and I started laying out my tools. I used a marking knife to mark where all the tools went. This makes it really easy to transfer my marks from one piece to the other. I'll cut the wood out of both pieces, that way the tool sits centered in this middle section. A marking knife is preferred to a pencil in this application because instead of trying to line up a pencil mark, you can simply drop your marking knife into the groove. I could have used a dado blade for cutting out these pieces, but that would have been a lot of setup and actually more work. If you like my videos, hit subscribe. That's the best way you can help me continue to make free content on YouTube. Here you can see me with the pieces together, simply dropping the marking knife in like I told you earlier and transferring my lines. Like I did before, I had to put some stop blocks in a few of the holes so the tools wouldn't fall all the way through. With all my tool recesses cut, I could glue these two pieces together, like I did the first set, and let them dry. I cleaned up all the holes with the rasp and uh, used the jointer to clean up the bottom edge. For all of my pins and sharpies and things like that, I didn't cut these recesses with the saw. I waited until the piece was glued up, and then I used a Forstner bit to drill down into the wood so I just have a slot left. The hardest part about this step was actually trying to get all of the sawdust out of these holes after they were drilled. With my middle section done, I could glue it to the back section and get that in clamps and move on to the bottom tray which holds the stuff that I need when I first get out in the shop. 
like my eye protection, my hearing protection, and I also have a magnetic tray in there to hold screws and other small metal bits while I'm working so they don't roll away from me. I didn't want my long steel ruler sticking way up out of this tool center. So what I did is I used a dado blade to cut this little recess in there. And I used some magnets to give it a place to snap in and hold on to. Building the bottom section was different than the first two sections because instead of marking my lines and then cutting recesses, I actually took small strips of walnut and super glued them in place to create little raised dividers that were about a quarter inch tall. Using super glue, activator, and then a chisel for cleanup made this really quick and easy. The super glue is just fine for this application. It's easier to remove than dealing with wood glue. I cut my pieces long, so then I could use a flush trim saw to take off any excess. Here I am installing my magnets, not only for the steel ruler, but I'm also putting them in the bottom section to hold some squares, my feeler gauges, and some other small metal items. With my bottom attached, I could now start working on some maple trim just to give this a little extra flair. Since I was stuck at home under quarantine, I couldn't go and access a CNC machine to do a lot of this build, so I resorted to just, you know, winging it with hand tools and getting close with the bandsaw and cleaning up with chisels, rasps, and sandpaper. This was all made out of scrap wood I had laying around since I couldn't leave the house. And overall, I think I'm pretty happy with this for a scrap wood project. It's not something I would sell or ever give to a client, but uh, you know, it works for what I'm doing in the shop. I used a spray lacquer for finish because it dries quick and it's easy to use. And with that, the tool center was done. These are all the tools that I use the most, and in an upcoming video, I'll go through tool by tool and show you which tools are important to me. I hope this video gave you some inspiration, and like I said before, let me know if you think this is a good project or a good idea or even useful down in the comments. I'll see you guys next time on Combs Design.